This is Twit. Facebook. <laughs> Remember I said Jan LeCun, who's in charge of AI at Facebook, his first reaction to ChatGPT was, well, we can do that. We can do that. We, <laughs> we, always, we could always yeah. do that. Uh, well, apparently they could. And now we know because their large language model has leaked online. It was posted on 4chan. <laughs> Uh, Facebook has been very, just like Google, very careful about it. Unlike Microsoft, they've been very careful about who has access to it. And, they, and what they would do is, is you'd have to apply and they'd give you approval. Researchers have been using it, government officials, members of civil society. <laughs> Apparently somebody got it on, put it up on 4chan. It's the first time, according to Vice, a uh, major tech firm's proprietary AI model has leaked to the public. Um, even when you use how many could actually do much with it? Well, it I mean, it, it doesn't matter if a lot of people can, it's just that the some right people, people can, can. right? Four chan members it's kind say of like they're running it on their own machines, bomb. yeah, right? It's the bomb plan, yeah. <laughs> um, and 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 of course, it's probably competitively difficult because I'm sure researchers from the other companies have immediately take, taken a look at it, um. It, there are different what sizes. What sets apart? Do we know yet? No, I haven't. I haven't heard from anybody who's uh, played with it to see. But part of the reason is uh, Facebook has been very uh, clear <laughs> that if you use this in any way, you're in deep doo doo. Uh, they're ta <clears throat> they're issuing takedown requests, and I think that they they have they've said to some people, "You better not. You you better not." Uh, Clement you, DeLong, who's the CEO not, of Hugging Face, that's the uh, Stable Diffusion company. Stable Diffusion. Yeah, posted a staff update from GitHub regarding the repository. Company Meta Platforms has requested a takedown of this published model, characterizing it as an unauthorized distribution of meta properties that constitutes copyright infringement or improper authorized use, and cautioned users against not only using it, but uploading any weights to the internet. Uh they're, they're, they acted, Facebook acted very quickly on this. And it's not something you can really, because I know it's not necessarily training, but you're still running a pretty large model. You need some serious compute horsepower. Not yeah. saying that, but it, it's not necessarily like something an individual could do. You need access to some. The one, the, 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 I, and I don't know because I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a moron, but. I, with stable, <laughs> with stable diffusion anyway, which I have installed and used, you can download other models. They call them checkpoints, but you can download a, a series of. You can download a model that's trained on a series of images from you know anime, and then you have all you have a more of an anime flavor to the stuff that's generated by it. I don't know if it's in that state. Uh, it's not clear to me, but it is possible to boil these large language models down in such a way that you can use them. With the proper front end. Yes, I think Can didn't Qualcomm just me? say they're? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Stacey. Um, I think they're running Stable Diffusion on a phone. It would be an Android phone. I have it uh, right yes, now are, on my uh, doing that. on yeah. my iPhone. iPhone. There is a okay. uh, a program free open source called Draw Things that's uh, Stable yeah. Diffusion uh, on an oh, iPhone. So and so Qualcomm had to tweak its yeah, stuff to make sure it was yeah, up to Apple's. It works fine. On Apple's a, bionic, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it works. For, anything with a uh, uh, neural processor should be able to do it. Let me see if I can find the. Uh, it's called Draw Things, and it, it it if you've ever used Stable Diffusion, you'll recognize it immediately. That's the Stable Diffusion interface, and you can even download uh, other checkpoints. So. Um, you, you know, get to choose the models, and there's different versions of Stable Diffusion available. These models are big, 1.6 gigs, but uh, there, there's, there's quite a few. So this is the full Stable Diffusion running. And by the way, I should point out, in yeah. reasonable time, on, um, on a, uh, on an iPhone. This is an iPhone 14 Pro Max. I mean, it's the high end iPhone, but it doesn't take long. This is a little Christmas card I made out of cut paper. But that's a simple Aww. prompt. You can have more more complicated prompts featuring Stacy's mom. <laughs> what do you think it's going to do with that? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know if we want to know. Um, 
that's, uh, Fountains of Wayne spells their Stacy without the superfluous E. Oh, so it's not your mom. It's somebody else's mom. That's it's it, it's another Stacy. It's mom. some other You're right. Some other Stacy, and it has all the parameters that you know you normally have with stable diffusion and stuff. It's fun. It's it's you know. So yeah, Qualcomm finally figured out how to put it on an Android device. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I was like, we've had that forever. I, yeah. <laughs> like we can show it off. Yeah, it so, does it so, in under fifteen seconds. Can I ask a question? I understand how language, large language models, make tokens for words and data about the relationships among the words. How does a visual one work? What's a token in the learning set for a visual? It depends on if it's for photos versus videos, two D versus three D. Um, the Pick most one. basic. All Pick right. So like a 2D facial kind of model thing, or even something like pers like object detection, they're creating um, relationships between significant uh, things Shapes. on a face for fa facial recognition. So they're looking for like eyes. And so they're doing like the distance between your eyes and your mouth and your nose. So that, Are that's they trained what they're doing. on the idea of the eye and recognizing what an eye is. I think they pick out the eye on their own in yeah. the model. Like you show them enough faces and they're like, well, all oh, these faces seem to have, has. yeah, these things. And then, so, and then to understand the difference, they, they figure out okay. the relation, those relationships on like the 3d models, which are used for like video, it's more complex. And usually what happens is the computer is going, it will identify things like eyes and stuff. But then you're also writing code to recognize that the object has not permanence, uh, something beyond the flatness of it. Does that mm -hmm. depth, depth, depth? That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a dimensions. there's a short uh, video uh, on YouTube uh, uh, associated with a larger article from Louis Bouchard. How ge AI generates new images. Gans simply put as Louis L O U I S B O U C H A R D dot A I. Uh, and you can find to him generate on, new on images. We use an architecture called generative adversarial network. And guess what? It works. He is a French. Composed of an encoder and a decoder. Both are. I didn't understand you. Sorry. You. Decoder works. <laughs> anyway, you can you can watch this. You know what? YouTube is really good for this subject. By the way, there's some really fantastic. Yeah. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space books and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.